Les Thatcher, welcome to Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Outstanding television card today. But before we talk about that, Les, I think uh, all eyes are set on 1981. That's right. We're into a new year. Uh, we're, for some of us, into it uh, just a few days away. But uh, Don Curtis has been in the 1981, and uh, he's going to make wrestling here uh, even tougher uh, competitively than it has been in the past year, Charlie, with the return of uh, an athlete who is certainly no stranger to anyone in this area, Ken Lucas. Ken Lucas will be returning to Southeastern Wrestling along with uh, Robert Gibson, Paul Orndorff. Right, Orndorff, the former North American heavyweight uh, wrestling champion, a tough competitor. He'll be uh, making his presence known in the area and uh, two very special wrestlers coming up in the month of February 1981. National Wrestling Alliance World Champion Charlie Harley Race and 7'4 inch Andre the Giant. An outstanding year in store for wrestling fans throughout the southeastern wrestling nice. area. Today in action, we'll be seeing uh, Jimmy Golden, who's just returned to the southeastern area. That's right. He'll be taking on a newcomer uh, that we'll be seeing for the first time, Frank Levert. Also, uh, Randy Rose and Dennis Condry, the former southeastern tag champions, will be in action against Mike Jackson and Norvell Austin. On personality profile, we'll be talking to eight wrestlers in the area who have been... Uh, bumping heads for the past couple of weeks. Charlie will be uh, Rose Condry, Bass, and Saito. We'll also be talking to the Tennessee stud, Johnny Bayett, and the Armstrongs. A lot of action coming your way today on Southeastern Wrestling. Stay with us. Let's go to the ring now for the introduction of our first match. Our first match, one fall, 10-minute time. The Mitchell referee is Tommy Weathers. Tommy Weathers. Introducing in the corner to my left at 232 pounds from Montgomery, Alabama, Jimmy Golden. Jimmy Golden. His opponent at 265 pounds from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Frank Levert. Frank Levert. Frank Levert taking on Jimmy Golden. Golden just uh, back into the Southeastern Wrestling area after the staying off quite some time, staying out of professional wrestling altogether because of back injuries. You know, Charlie, I was talking to Jimmy uh, earlier in the dress room, and uh, in a way, the injury, of course, I can't say the injury was an advantage, but... Uh, the fact that Jimmy had some time off, you know, uh, to rest himself, not only physically, uh, but mentally as well. And uh, you need, need to get away from the pace. It's a grueling uh, pace to professional wrestling wars. And uh, Jimmy back in action. Uh, some question of whether or not uh, he can make that junior heavyweight limit at this time. But he certainly has his sights set on Jerry Stubbs, the United States junior heavyweight champion. And I think we'll find Jimmy Golden... Uh, a gentleman who should be at the uh, peak years of his career already the past three or four years uh, has to be considered one of the very top junior heavyweights in the division. Into a pinning position, count of one. Golden outweighed uh, some, what, about 30 pounds. Uh, 30 to 35 pounds, that's right, Charlie. And, of course, uh, Jimmy has always uh, built his offense on speed. Of course, uh, as we all get older, we uh, have to alter some of our uh, offensive abilities not that jimmy is too old to be bad uh the experience you know it teaches you one good move uh, one solid hold is worth uh, five or six mediocre ones and uh, jimmy has that speed he holds it reserved when necessary and uh, it's uh certainly stood him in good stead throughout his career head scissors by lambert we have a break I think uh, LeVert will find out that that uh, 35 pounds that we're talking about, some 35, 40 pounds, uh, won't uh, be a huge advantage for him here. He does lack the experience. Uh, and again, uh, the blinding speed of Jimmy Golden can well offset that 35 pounds. Golden unleashing on Lebert. Golden, uh, very apt with uh, either side of the ledger. He can wrestle you hold for hold or trade blows with you, as we're seeing here. And he turns Levert over uh, center ring with a kick to the midsection, Charlie. Golden takes his man into a neck breaker position. That's going to be that reverse neck breaker. Uh, we see Jimmy use that extensively since his return. It has been his uh, key card, his ace and hole, so to speak. And uh, another strong win for Jimmy Golden. Jimmy Golden, and uh, coming out to join us now, a gentleman uh, who uh, has been campaigning for quite some time in the southeastern wrestling area. He campaigns all across the United States and in foreign countries. He is the U.S. Junior Heavyweight Champion, and uh, here we're referring to Jerry Stubbs. I believe we have some videotape of a match in which uh, you went against well, the shadow. Yeah, you got some tape to where I put out the lights on the shadow here. Let's roll the tape. Uh, the shadow against Jerry Stubbs, and of course, Jerry, this was a non-title bout. This one here? 
was a title. A title, excuse me, I'm sorry, a title. And I defeated him, and I still have the belt, and I'm still champion. Right here you see uh, Norvell Austin, you know, uh, lucky as always. He's always been lucky when he's on top of me. But you'll see, a lot of times I lure the guy in just to where I want him. And when I get him, uh, it's all over. Right, Charlie Pat? Well, uh, that's uh, your opinion. I, I agree to a certain extent that you have a uh, talent in, as far as luring your opponents into certain situations. As we watch the action here, Jerry, let me pose a question. Uh, we just saw a man in the ring uh, here a few minutes ago, Jimmy Golden, who uh, certainly has to be considered one of the top junior heavyweights over the past several years, just returning now from an injury, of course. But uh, Jimmy uh, is a man who has uh, stated his... Uh, ideas that he wants to be United States Junior Heavyweight Champion and he more or less is indirectly issued a challenge to you. Well you know there's a lot of people that wants to be the U.S. Junior Champion but who has it? I am Jerry Stubb the U.S. Junior Heavyweight Champion. Well you know Jimmy Golden uh, I just got through watching him myself bless and uh, he has he's, he's definitely got himself in shape but not shape enough for me because this is one thing I don't give up is the U.S. Junior title so he's gonna have his hands cut out for him if he thinks he's going to take it away from me. Good suplex by the champion on the shadow. Jerry, uh, you have been dueling with Norvell Austin for a number of weeks. Uh, we're looking at the match with the shadow. Uh, you're talking about this being Austin. Either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, again, it's a ruling contest with this man. Uh, do you feel that uh, these championship bouts are taking their toll? Do you feel that uh, possibly a man like Golden waiting in the wings uh, would have an advantage uh, after some of these uh, tough defenses you had against Austin or against the Shadow? Well, you know, I'm not denying that he's tough and will have an advantage over me because he's overweight. Look at the guy. You know, he, he's been out of work for uh, possibly, what, six, eight, ten months? And uh, the guy has put on some weight. He hadn't really gotten in the gym and done a lot of training, so, you know, he's, I don't believe he'd be able to keep up with me. You don't feel that he's going to trim, be able to trim that weight down and make the division? No, I don't think so. I don't think he's got the uh, guts and fortitude to uh, to go up and try to lose weight. Let me ask you what you were going after here in, in your boot. It's I was adjusting my boot. There's you saw me, I adjusted my boot. In your hand, I think it would be very the sock fell down, so I pulled in. it up. That's, uh, that's not what it appears to be. You uh, have some kind of See, object my, in my your hand. My sock fell back down again, so I fixed it again. I, I don't see what you mean. I pulled something out of my boot. Well, I think it's very obvious that if you replace something uh, into your boot after uh, striking uh, the shadow, my lace came undone there, left, and what I was doing is sliding my lace back down in my sock. Uh, we were talking about Jimmy Golden, Charlie, and we're going to see Jimmy just moment because uh, now with uh, the yeah, shadow you'll see Jimmy relatively Golden unconscious, just a uh, because just like Jimmy Golden is, the backstabber that he is, you'll see him run in the ring, and what does he do? Pull me around and hit me. This is not his match. This is my match. He had no business in here. Right? Am I right or not? He had no business. He legally did not belong in the ring. I'll go along with that. I think it was clear to Golden, uh, as well as it is to us on uh, watching this tape, that you did use some kind of an object on Austin. Well, uh, it, it might have appeared that I did, but like I said, I was adjusting my sock. You know, it's just like playing basketball. Your socks kind of slide down your leg, and, you know, you have a tendency to pull them back up. That's exactly what I did. I didn't pull anything out of my boot. Charlie, whenever the case, uh, the, the road has been rough, Jerry, you've been, you've been a great champion. I, I can't uh, make enough emphasis on that. Uh, the, the shadow's been tough, and if Golden gets that title match, if he makes that weight cut, he's going to be a tough one. Well, you know, it, it takes somebody uh, a long time unless he has the guts enough to do what he's supposed to do, like get in the gym, run a lot, lift weights, trim himself down. I weighed over 235 pounds when I got the belt because I trimmed down to 225. It's not easy, and I don't believe Jimmy Golden's got the guts enough to get in the gym and try to do it. I know he has a determination to go after that United States Junior Heavyweight Championship, and... Uh, well, you, we'll know, it says, you things... know, it says United States Junior Heavyweight. Well, Junior, you know, just put the Junior aside. I can beat just about any heavyweight if I want to. Well, those are uh, the comments of the U.S. Junior Heavyweight Champion Jerry Stubbs. More action to come on Southeastern Wrestling. Auditorium Bell Time ACM, a super southeastern wrestling card. For reservations and information, call 320-6163. Here's your lineup.
Texas Deathmatch rules an eight-man tag team match. $30,000 to the winner. The Tennessee Stud, Johnny Valiant, Bob and Brad Armstrong take on outlaw Ron Bass, Mr. Saito, Randy Rose, and Dennis Condry. United States Junior Heavyweight Kingpin Jerry Stubbs defends his title against the Shadow. Jimmy Golden squares off with Oki Shakina. Former North American Heavyweight Champion Paul Orndorff takes on the Avenger. And in a special challenge match, Bob Armstrong goes against Dennis Condry. Don't forget, Texas Deathmatch rules eight-man tag team action. The stud, Valiant and the Armstrongs against Bass, Saito, Rose, and Condry. Jerry Stubbs defends his U.S. title against the Shadow, Golden against Shakina, Orndorff against the Avenger, and in a special challenge match, Bob Armstrong against Dennis Condry. It all comes together this Monday night, Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium, bell time, 8 p.m. One addition to that Monday night card will be the tough Russian grappler Alexis Smirnov. He'll be meeting former North American heavyweight champion Paul Orndorff. With me now, the United States junior heavyweight kingpin, Jerry Stubbs. And on Monday night in Boutwell Auditorium, he'll be putting his belt and title on the line against the shadow. And before we talk to the champion, let's hear these comments from the challenger. Jerry Stubbs, one more time, daddy, one more time for the shadow. A lot at stake this time. I know I got to be ready, which I am. I stay ready. I stay fired up. I'm going for your belt. And my chances are good. You say I ain't got but one chance. I heard you saying last week that you're just going to get a shot of one more chance. But this may be my last chance, but I only need one chance. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to make that chance good. And when it's all over, you going down. My hand going to be raised in victory. Jerry, last ch chance seems to be the key phrase, and the shadow realizes this could be it for him. He's going to be coming with all his guns loaded. Well, you know, uh, he had a last chance at Norvell Austin. Then he came up with some kind of deal that I don't know how he slid it on me, but he did. He came up as a shadow. Well, you know, he's been pretty lucky. But, you know, this belt's on the line this time. And shadow, boy, it gets rougher and rougher down the line because this is one time. You're going to wish you hadn't put your name on the dotted line. Because when I get through with you, it's going to be absolutely, positively, your last chance at my belt. And I did say my belt. And when I leave, it will still be mine. So you might as well just pack your bags and leave. Because you're not leaving with this belt around your waist. Monday night, Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium. Jerry Stubbs defends his U.S. junior title against the shadow. An eight-man tag, Texas Deathmatch rules. The stud, the Armstrongs and Valiant against Bass, Saito, Rose, and Condry. A super lineup also in that card, Paul Orndorff, Alexis Smirnoff. A great array of stars this Monday night in Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium. Join me now, a gentleman who at his young career has had a successful career in pro wrestling, and we've seen him before here in the southeastern wrestling area. He's traveled all over the world. Jimmy Golden, welcome back to the southeastern wrestling area. Thanks a lot, Charlie Platt, and I'm glad to be here and looking forward to some wrestling action. When we last uh, saw you, Jimmy, you uh, suffered a back injury. You uh, were wise enough to take the doctor's advice. You stayed out of professional wrestling for... Uh, several months. Well, I guess we all get hurt sometime or another, and I had a back injury, but the back is doing fine now. I had to rest and got it in shape, and I guess I'm just about as in good a shape as anybody else in this area today, and I'm looking forward to meeting one fella by the name of Jerry Stubbs, and, uh, you know, Stubbs, I guess I had the best record there ever was held in this country when I left here, and I aim for it to be better than that this time, and I'm going to start with you, brother. I'm going to start with you first. I know you're big and strong. You'll probably pick me up off the floor anytime you want to, but it's know-how, Daddy. It's know-how right here, and I'm going to prove that to you when I get in the ring. Look out, Jerry Stubbs. You're very flexible, Jimmy, not only in your style of wrestling, but in competition as you can compete as a heavyweight, and then again, you are... Uh, right in the weight category for the U.S. Junior title. That's right. 225 is the U.S. Junior title. Sometimes I go a little over that, up to 230 or so. But I can, like you say, go back and forth. And Jerry Stubbs, I am 225, and I'm going to whip you, Sonny. Something else. Uh, we noted a little change in Jimmy Golden's attitude on um, this tour in the southeastern wrestling area. Well, uh, you know, I... I'm just me, Charlie, you know, I'm just going to do my thing, brother. I just want to turn me loose in the ring and let him do my thing. A wrestler I am, and I'm, going, I'm here to prove it. Like I said, my record was real good. This time I'm going to make it better. Comments of Jimmy Golden, who evidently uh, part of his intentions are set on the United States Junior Heavyweight Championship, now held by Jerry Stubbs. Our next match, one fall, 10-minute time limit tag team match. Introducing in the corner of my left. 
At a combined weight of 423 pounds, Mike Jackson and Norvell Austin. Jackson and Austin. Their opponents at a combined weight of 472 pounds, Randy Rose and Dennis Condry. Rose and Condry. The former Southeastern Tag Champions taking on Mike Jackson and Norvell Austin. Uh, Junkyard Dog, and Mike Jackson. I don't know if the fans here are uh, familiar with Mike Jackson, but you know, I saw him wrestle the first time in several years a couple weeks ago, Charlie, and uh, this young man has come a long way, and uh, uh, he does lack a little bit in the weight, but uh, good speed, uh, good moves in that ring, and of course, they're facing a tough combination, uh, Condry and Rose, former Southeastern Tag Team Champions. I don't think I can impress enough about Condry and Rose. A lot of fans immediately expect to see him posing uh, in size and stature, wrestlers uh, to, to be the top dogs. Condry and Rose are tough in as much as they pick away an opponent. Uh, they find a spot, they go to work, they spend the time there, they're tenacious with their style, and uh, they're tough. They're very tough. And of course, uh, they're right now wanting to uh, prove a point, put those uh, tag team belts back around their waists again. That is exactly what they have on their minds. Uh, and I really think that uh, they, they're going to be pursuing that, that matter more than anything else they've ever done in their career. Brad and Bob, father-son team of the Armstrongs, the current Southeastern Tag Champions, and uh, we must say excellent champions in Bob nice, and Brad. Nice switch by uh, Norvell, but uh, Rose catches the tag from his cousin Dennis Condry. You know, I think more than just the loss by uh, Rose and Condry, the embarrassment they feel because of the age and the experience of Brad Armstrong. But I don't think they should feel bad at all. This young man has proved himself to be a, uh, a very, very tough competitor, along with his father, former tough tag team combination. Jackson takes a tag. We'll see action from him for the first time in our ring. Arm twist on Rose. Arm drag takedown, and he and that arm bar comes down with that leg. Mike Jackson applying the pressure on that arm as uh, Rose trying to roll across is blocked by Jackson. They come up now. Mike Jackson still with the arm bar, but those belts torn by Randy Rose dropped the young man from Birmingham, and the tag goes to Dennis Condry. Condry in, takes that knee into the midsection of Jackson. Snap there, takedown. But it's Jackson. Good yep. switch by Mike. Good switch coming up with that hammerlock. Traps the uh, forearm, the right arm now, and relinquishes that to go back to the left arm, controlling from that point. Nice take down by Condry. Jackson holds on, but uh, Dennis on top. And of course, here's where the uh, the weight of Dennis Condry will certainly uh, play a large part, Charlie. Exactly. Condry now takes a man, what appears to be thrown into the throat. Tag goes to Randy Rose. Rose moves in, takes command now. That blind elbow nails Mike Jackson, takes him down. And a one count, uh, Jackson bails out. Here we see those uh, former champions come alive with that teamwork that they're uh, so well known for. Jackson trying to uh, bail out there and uh, switch into a hammerlock, but Rose was able to brace himself, let Jackson go, and move right back in on top. Jackson again with a good switch, but Rose blocking. And the tag goes to Dennis Condry. Condry in now. Goes into the back of Jackson. Abdominal stretch by Condry. And using extra leverage from Rose. Using that extra leverage from Rose, we have no submission. Little help from Cuz. Never hurt when the referee can't see it, Charlie. That's exactly what's going on there now. Jackson trying to make the tag. The Norvell Austin just inches away. Condry blocks the attempt for the tag. Shoots his man cross ring. Elbow stops him, and down goes Jackson. Down for the pin. Count of one, and Jackson powers out. Front chancery again by Condry. Condry and Rose both realizing this young man uh, has a bit of speed there. You notice they're blocking, trying to keep him on that mat. He tags Norvell Austin, and a junkyard dog comes in to do his natural thing. Tag is made with Randy Rose. Rose catching a series of rights and lefts from Austin Headbutt, takes his man into the turnbuckle high, back body drop. And Rose goes crashing to that canvas as Norvell moves in, tries to the kick, Rose moves out of the way, but Austin still pressing for that advantage, comes high with a knee drop, 
Let's see if he gets the pin here. Rose out on the one. Rose driving the points of those fingers into the windpipe of Norvell Austin. Being cautioned by referee Tommy Weathers. Rose goes to the tag, and of course, here's one of the keys of Condry and Rose. Is the beautiful tags, a good timing, Charlie, has been a key ingredient for these two gentlemen. Austin going into the wrong corner. And it's also uh, interesting to watch these two and uh, their tactics of blocking tags for the uh, opposing team. They uh, wear one man down, and they uh, they really keep him from making that tag. They certainly do. Now the tag goes into Rose off that second rope uh, with a shot. Condry blocking down to the last second. We might reiterate here once again that the wrestler, once he makes the tag, has a five count to clear that ring. So until that five, they are the rules of professional wrestling. Rose crashing down with that forearm. He gets a two, but the dog is out and still doing business. Tag is made with cousin Dennis Condry. Country and boot to the midsection. Austin needing desperately to make that tag with Jackson. And so far, the Rose Country team has uh, halted all efforts for Norvell to make a tag. Austin trying to find his way out of that corner. Rose Country doing a good job of blocking. The two-on-one situation certainly is no liking and serving them well. Power slam by Condry on the junkyard. Dog and a two, and Austin is out. Two count, and good he second, comes out of it. Good second effort by Norvell Austin. Shoulder smash, and both men are down. Condry bounced the back of his head on that one, too, Charlie. He's stunned. Condry up first to his knees. He makes the tag. Wise decision. Austin goes the same direction. He makes the tag. We're starting fresh with Mike Jackson, Randy Rose. Jackson takes his man into the ropes, but it's Rose coming off of that boot. Rose takes Jackson again into the ropes. Elbow into the chest area for the pin. One count, and Jackson powers out. Jackson hanging tough, and uh, Austin and Jackson have given a good account of themselves here. Not having wrestled as a team in the past, uh, considering all things, they're, uh, they're right in this one, Charlie, as it is from the very beginning. Full slam by Condry. And again, a one count on Mike Jackson. Condry and Rose uh, pecking away. They seem to just gain control, but uh, never completely. Blocking Jackson is Connery makes the tag. Rose in now. And again, they start chipping away the offensive armor of Mike Jackson. Tag goes to the dog once again. Norrell lost it in, pounding away at Rose. Having to fight both men off at this point. Condry coming in that ring. Norvell and Mike have been able to keep a fresh man in when necessary. Rose and Condry have uh, started to pick up the edge several times, but both Jackson and Austin have made timely tags. It has kept this match close to even, Charlie. It's Randy Rose now with that uh, chin lock on Austin. Rose laying that weight in, wearing his man down, slowing Austin down, controlling him here. Hoping this time to keep Norvell out of that corner. You know, Rose and Condry are not the uh, Dan Fouts of the San Diego Chargers. Uh, they're more like a Johnny Unitas. They're not the big play team. They'll peck away at you, catch you when you're unexpecting uh, some sort of move, and come right back at you with it. And this is what they've done with Austin and Jackson. The junkyard dog back up to good shoulder smash. He makes the tag with Mike Jackson. Jackson carries the connections to the side. And this could change the tide of battle. Austin and Jackson could fix the tempo up here. Wait a minute. A double clothesline. Condry helping out from the outside. The ring. Rose pulls it out with a three count. And you've got winners, Charlie. And your winners of the match. A former Southwestern Tag Champion. I think that goes to show what I've been saying, Charlie. These fine guys find a spot to they take advantage. That goes to show you right there. We are the Earth Club Southeastern Champions. 
We got two geeks walking around here just carrying our belts around for us. They don't belong to you, boys. You can tote them all you want to, conspiracy. but you stole them. Kind they do not road. belong to you. You see it right there with the referee. Another conspiracy. We are the champions. Your winners of the match, uh, Randy Rose and Dennis Condra. Our personality profile right. coming up next. Condra and Rose. The final will be Luscious Johnny Valiant, Ron Ford, the Tennessee Stud, and the new Southeastern Tag Team Champions, Bob and Brad Armstrong. And gentlemen, uh, we're going to discuss uh, what basically has turned into an eight-man war. Uh, we'll be seeing uh, a bit of tape footage uh, in just a few minutes, but uh, Ron, this whole thing began with uh, you, where you and Johnny Valiant were signed uh, in the Texas Death Match against the Mongolian Stopper and Don Carson. Well, that's right, Les, and uh, John had received a concussion from those same two guys a week earlier, and uh, uh, officials, uh, as well as the doctor, commission doctor, would not allow John to participate. I tried to take on both men by myself and was able to hold my own for a short time, and then luckily Bob back here came to help me out, and uh, at the end of this match, uh, we had four guys that were not in, scheduled to be in the match, uh, should have been nowhere around the ring, end up jumping in the ring and uh, trying to do away with both myself and Bob Armstrong. And uh, I think the film's pretty much self-explanatory, and that's the reason, as you said, Les, that we asked for an eight-man tag match, and uh, we put up some money ourselves. And that, at this point, Bob's already come down to help me and uh, had already made a, a strong comeback, but these guys have... We're just uh, with the glove and the boot and everything else a little bit too much for, for Bob, and Bob had been bleeding previously. He'd already been hurt earlier in the night and shouldn't have been out there to begin with, really. Well, John, uh, of course, uh, the decision not to wrestle with uh, the Tennessee stud in this particular match was uh, not a decision of your liking. Well, exactly uh, right, Les Thatcher. I mean, uh, you know, when a doctor talks to me anymore, you know, it used to be years ago when somebody said something, I'll say, well, I'll show you how tough I am, I'll get there, I'll... I'll fly to wherever I have to go to wrestle, and I'll get up and I do it, and I, uh, I did it. But I'll tell you something, as the years go by and the injuries seem to increase, uh, you uh, learn from the different things. You know, just like you make a mistake in the ring, sometimes it causes you to win or lose or whatever. Sometimes you make a mistake to wrestle when you're injured. I mean, uh, hey, th these things are postponed. I mean, hey, uh, look at uh, look at Duran and that fight with, uh, with Leonard. I mean, uh, sure, it might be controversial, but uh, Duran had the cramps. I mean, hey, I had a tremendous injury on in my head. And it was a uh, concussion. The man told me, hey, Valiant, you go in the ring one more time, unless you take a little time off here, you're going to terminate your career. So <laughs> what's the big choice? And speaking of terminating careers, it, that's just what Bob and I are doing at this point. We've ended up with Carson's glove and with the Stomper's boot, and we're about to terminate Don Carson's uh, residence in this particular part of the country, right there. And uh, you won't see Carson Here's around the anymore, right nor the Stomper anymore. And right here is where you see. Uh, Bob, uh, Dennis County, Randy Rose are bouncing in that ring. Of course, earlier on this same card, uh, you and Brad relieved them of the tag team championship belts. Exactly right, and they were screaming that we stole them, we didn't steal them, we won them. But in that match, they opened me up pretty good, lacerated me, and I lost a lot of blood, but I didn't want to watch the stud stay out there and take on two by himself. So we came out there, we did the job on the guys, and then here comes Condry making his promise. He swore that night, he said, I'll get you. It's the last thing I do, and he picked this time to really get me, and he did. He opened me up again profusely. They had uh, some kind of foreign object there. You can see the move they're doing to me right here. They were trying to take me out of it for a while, for sure. And they had a field day. Saito in the back there with his sleeper on me, and Bass standing there just stomping me in the head. and. Uh, Right now, they are having just that appeal. Of course, we mentioned this uh, This was a foundation for what uh, has uh, been termed by many as an eight-man war, but what it amounts to is $30,000 in prize money going to the winning team comprised of uh, either you four gentlemen or Rose Condry, Saito, and Bass. But even adding to that, the fact that eight wrestlers are involved, it is Texas deathmatch rules. And, of course, Bob, it basically uh, anything goes. That's exactly right. That's the way they wanted to play it when it was four on two. So why not get four on four and let the best team win? You know, I don't like to take a beating like this from anybody, anytime, anywhere. I think and we're going to settle it in a Texas deathmatch, which I think is the best way where falls do not count. You go till somebody's laying flat on his back and can't answer a 10 count. You can go all night if you want to. And I intend to pay back because every time I look in the mirror, I see this scar right down my forehead. And I remember Condry Rose, Saito, and Bass all had a hand in it. Now it's four against four. Let's see how they like it when it's even Steven. 
instead of 402. But I want to know something right now. I, hey, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to say this to my teammates here. I want everybody to stay out of my way, man. I want everybody to stay out of my way because I want to be the lead dog. I want to be the man to start that match. I want to be the man to finish that match. I want to be the man during that match. I want to be your man, man. I want to be your man. I want to be everybody's man, but I'll tell you, I'm my man. That's the point I want to get to. $30,000, Ron, uh, probably the largest individual purse I, I know in 20 years of being around professional wrestling, and uh, certainly not only the four you battling for, but four equally as tough uh, professional athletes. Well, that's right. I appreciate John's uh, attitude there, and uh, I certainly uh, want to see everybody in this match, all four of us, get our opportunity to take care of some business. $30,000 is a whole lot of money, there's no doubt about it, and $5,000 of it each of our own money we have put up and those guys have put up curtis added ten thousand to it somebody less thatcher is going to win seventy five hundred dollars each one of these teams and we're looking forward to it texas death match eight of us thirty grand an eight man texas death match thirty thousand dollars going to the winning combination it's certainly going to be an eight man war that has been our personality profile for today we hope you've enjoyed it all 10 minute time limit introducing in the corner to my left at 255 pounds from the volunteer state of tennessee the current southeastern heavyweight champion the tennessee stud the tennessee stud his opponent at 225 pounds from parts unknown the scorpion 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 taking on the southeastern heavyweight champion the tennessee stud our first look at the Scorpion, Charlie, but of course the same as you said, not really restrained with anyone here. And the Scorpion, lacking the size, weight, and height there, opens up early, catches the stud with a knee, doubles him up, and the Scorpion trying to put his opponent away in a hurry. The stud has yet to get a good start, or any start at all, Charlie. The Scorpion continuing to work on the Tennessee stud, but he comes out of that corner. Head first into that turn. The stud now mounting an offense, and this man is awesome once he gets going. The elbow by the stud. Now the Scorpion certainly dazed by that one, and the stud lifts him 69 inches in the air and slams him. Tennessee stud. Closing in on the Scorpion. I can see the Scorpion didn't feel any different about this match than I did, Charlie. It was either an early start or no start at all. He put it together early, but the stud with that backbreaker and keeps his man. And again, two backbreakers. Let's see it. No, he's not going to put him away here. He wants to go with him a little bit. Takes his man into a suplex position up high. And that's a long way down, Charlie. An elbow and a later elbow. And the stud apparently using this man as an example. And he's got a win. Your winner of the match, the Southeastern Heavyweight Champion, the Tennessee Stud. More action to come on Southeastern Wrestling. But this Monday night, Birmingham is about well out of tour. And that card capped off by an eight-man tag team match. Texas Deathmatch rules. $30,000 in prize money going to the winning team. And it will be the Tennessee Stud, Johnny Valiant, Bob and Brad Armstrong against the four gentlemen surrounding me here, Ron Bass, Randy Rose, Mr. Saito, and Dennis Condry. And Ron, for this kind of prize money, everyone is going to be in there gunning to win. Texas death match. <laughs> Les Thatcher, as we've always said down in Texas, everywhere else is just a suburb of Texas. And that's exactly what's happening. Everywhere you look, you see people thinking Texas. Well, that's fine, because it's a Texas death match now. Falls don't count. There's no disqualification. Anything that any individual wants to do, we can do. And then you add all of that together and put $7,500 to the winner. Each person gets $7,500. You better believe that this Texan and all his friends right here are going to be in there kicking, gouging, scratching, whatever we got to do to get that money, baby. Randy, uh, certainly the biggest uh, prize money for one match I've ever seen. Right, uh, you're $30,000 gonna... split between the four big Texans. That's right. That man baby. here just made us an honorary Texan. <laughs> All of us. Oh, even our Japanese friend here, he made him an honorary Texan so we can go into Texas death match and come out 
victorious and rich. Mr. Saito, a lot of American dollars at stake Monday night. Oh, Mr. Saito, a lot of American dollars. I love American dollars. Then I love Texas this much. I love a lot. I love talk. I love me Japanese. Who is in Japan? I love the other one. Uh, would you like to translate hey, that? All I'm going to say is we're going to fly the governor of Texas down here and he's going to be at ringside watching a Texas death match and he's going to see one of the native sons, all of us, come out victorious. We're going to get the hurt people in this match. Uh, Anything goes, baby. Night and you're going to get it for 7,500 banana. Attention, please. Our next match, one fall tag team match, time limit remaining. Introducing in the corner to my right, at a combined weight of 520 pounds, Ron Bass and the Japanese destroyer Oki Shakina. Their opponents, at a combined weight of 433 pounds, from Marietta, Georgia, the current Southeastern Tag Team Champions, Bob and Brad Armstrong. <laughs> Japanese destroyer Oki Shikita, big Ryan Bass from Texas, taking on the Southeastern Tag Champions. The Armstrongs, Bob and Brad. What a television main event. Brad and Dad against Oki Shikita and outlaw Ron Bass. And you're right, Charlie, the Southeastern Tag Team Champions. Bradley certainly proud of those belts and uh, doubly proud of the fact that he won his first title along with his dad who has held many championships down that professional wrestling trail of his. Shakina driving Brad into that corner. The tag goes Bob with that old-fashioned American right hand does his thing and we've got action. Twist by Bob, tag is made with Brad. And from the other side, the count begins by Tommy Weathers. Double thrust into the chest and a pinning position on Shakina. There you see Bass going over on the side. Pull Brad off. Talk about teamwork. We saw it there with the Armstrongs. We were discussing teamwork as we watched Tommy and Rose. And it's the type of competition that you're going to see when the Armstrongs, Connor, and Rose uh, meet in that square circle. Shakina makes the tag, and the outlaw from Texas moves in to do battle with Brad Armstrong. And the uh, capacity crowd in our television sports arena picks up the chant, Go, Brad, go. They got to get behind a winner, and they're certainly behind Brad Armstrong. The comments are made about the youth of this gentleman, about his size, about his lack of experience. But the main comment is, along with his father, he shares a Southeastern Tag Team Championship, and that speaks for itself, Charlie. Bass using that thumb to the throat. That's Brad Armstrong. Connection in the midsection. Tag is made with Shakina. From behind, Shakina. Brad hanging tough as Shakina and Bass switching on him. Pounding away at him, trying to soften him up. And that clothesline shot by Shakina has Brad skidding across that canvas and hitting the deck. Again, a nice tag, and Bass Shakina working well as a combination. Bass blocking with that front chancery now as Bradley trying to drive him into that corner and make it to his partner. Use of the tights there by Bass to bring Brad over into that corner. And again, Shakina's in. Picks up that front chancery. And again, Brad Armstrong tries to make the tag with his father. He does. But referee Tommy Weathers did not see the tag, Charlie. He cannot allow it. When he turned around, Brad was more than an arm's distance from his father. And because of that, uh, the tag will not be allowed. Shakina does make the tag with Ron Bass. And the big outlaw moves in to pound away at Brad Armstrong. Working on the abdominal muscles now. Going to that stomach claw. And this may be something he's helped perfect with his friend, Mr. Saito. Take down by the hair. Give credit to Brad Armstrong. He hangs up. He's fighting the man's size. He's fighting him experience, but in no way, shape, or form is he spotting him any intestinal fortitude or just pure, plain old American guts. 
Bass continues to apply that pressure. Brad Armstrong trying to make his way to his feet. Brad is up, and let's see where he's going from here. Shot to the midsection, loosens him up a bit, but Shakina catches a tag. And Hokey moves in to stop Brad Armstrong. If Brad could have gotten away there, he would have made that tag. Shakina now, right back to where partner Bass left off. And we've got a heck of a tag match on our hands, Charlie. Indeed, we do, Les. Shakina picking up where Bass left off. Flying that pressure coming down again. Brad needing to make the tag with his father. The abdominal muscles need a rest now. Bass and Shakina have been working alternately on Brad's midsection. And Bob, as you can see at the top of your screen center, yelling encouragement to his son and partner. Brad gets a good right in, but from that distance, it's hard to stop a man. Brad still goes under Shakina. He makes the pass. Bob Armstrong in. Then comes Bass. And when Pip opens up, Pip knows how to go. Bob Armstrong takes care of both the backstop on Shakina. And Ron Bass gets again now outside the ring. He goes. Let's see what Bob's got in mind here. He goes after Bass. Brad moves in on Shakina. And Bob Armstrong driving Ron Bass across the floor outside the ring here in our studio. Bass going into that ring post in the ring. Brad continues. Shakina choking Brad Armstrong over in that corner. Bob and Ron Bass back at it again. Referee Tommy Weathers can't get it stopped. Bass moves away again. Shakina trapped in the corner by Brad Armstrong. Now this seesaw back and forth. But as the action slows down, it's Brad Armstrong having his way with Oki Shakina. And what a tag main event we have here. Brad takes his man high on the Japanese destroyer for the pin. And there you see Ron Bass pulling Brad off by the hair. Brad up waiting center ring now. Bass caught the tag but couldn't slide in on the blind side. So Bradley is waiting on him and let's see what's going to happen here. Never ceases to amaze, amaze me. Uh, the go the type of uh, stick to it of this uh, the go get him attitude that Brad Armstrong has, Charlie. He's got the arm bar right now on Ron Bass, and the outlaw in trouble as Brad windmills it a couple times and tags Dad. Armstrong, Bass goes down to the canvas. Shakina trying to make his way in the ring, and that's blocked by Bob. Again, we've got all four wrestlers in that square circle. Bass with a little advantage over Bob Armstrong is being put out now by the referee. Let's see what happens here. And over the top, Bob has got his man as he gets it does. He's got him. Good win. And a great win for the team of Bob and Brad Armstrong. Wait a minute. This match is... Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, Mr. Saito hit the ring. The victory belongs to the Armstrongs. But right now, Condry and Rose go to work on Bob. Saito putting a padded sleeper on Brad Armstrong as Shakina and Bass help out. Bob Armstrong has been lacerated, Charlie, as Condry and Rose pound away. And here comes the Tennessee stud. Blocking Bass as he comes to the ring. Stud. Boy, no combination. Here comes John. The ring is filling up. Bayes, the stud, the Armstrong, Shakita, Rose, Condry, Bass, Saito, they're all in that ring, and who's got who is anybody's guess. But we've got mass confusion, we've got action. And your winners of the match were the Armstrongs, Bob and Brad, and we'll be back with more in just a moment.
Help time, 8 p.m., a super southeastern wrestling card. For reservations and information, call 320-6163. Here's your lineup. Texas Deathmatch rules an eight-man tag team match. $30,000 to the winner. The Tennessee Stud, Johnny Valiant, Bob and Brad Armstrong take on outlaw Ron Bass, Mr. Saito, Randy Rose, and Dennis Condry. United States Junior Heavyweight Kingpin Jerry Stubbs defends his title against the Shadow. Jimmy Golden squares off with Oki Shakina. Former North American Heavyweight Champion Paul Orndorff takes on the Avenger. And in a special challenge match, Bob Armstrong goes against Dennis Condry. Don't forget, Texas Deathmatch rules eight-man tag team action. The stud, Valiant and the Armstrongs against Bass, Saito, Rose, and Condry. Jerry Stubbs defends his U.S. title against the Shadow, Golden against Shakina, Orndorff against the Avenger, and in a special challenge match, Bob Armstrong against Dennis Condry. It all comes together this Monday night, Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium, bell time, 8 p.m. One addition to that Monday night card in Boutwell Auditorium will be that of Russian wrestler Alexis Smirnov, as he'll be facing the former North American champion Paul Orndorff. Both these gentlemen will be in Birmingham for the very first time. But the highlight of that card, the main event, the match they're all talking about, an eight-man tag team event, Texas death match rules, and it is $30,000 to the winning team, John Vane. Yeah, can you imagine yourself uh, in a Texas death match for one minute? Can you visualize yourself and your wildest of dreams in the ring in there, man, with the likes of a guy like a Saito? I'll be chopping my friend as uh, a deck of cards. Bob, it looks like uh, Rose Condor will be gunning for the Armstrongs in that one Monday night. Well, they usually are. They're really upset because we won those Southeastern titles, and they've tried many tricks. They've opened me up good. Everybody in Birmingham saw that. They used some kind of foreign object. Well, let me tell you this, Les. In a Texas death match, foreign objects become legal. And two can play at that game. What's good for the goose yes, is good for the gander, yes, brother. Yes. And I'm going to get your goose in Birmingham Monday night. You can count on it. Well, let me have his gander then. The action's going to be fast, Ron. What the hell is a gander? Well, I'll say this. $30,000 is a lot of money, as much as I've ever competed for in the wrestling sport. And I know that $7,500 to each of us means a whole lot. I know it means a whole lot to you guys. This is a Texas death match. Anything goes. Falls don't count. It goes on until somebody cannot get to their feet. And all four of us in pretty darn good shape. We're going to be standing when it's over come Monday night. And one of you guys, or maybe several of you guys, are going to be laying. And we're looking forward to the 30 grand. This Monday night, bell time, 8 p.m., Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium. Be there. Last well, certainly we've seen a, a turn of events here on Southeastern Television Wrestling today. We certainly have, Charlie. Uh, this eight-man thing has just gone uh, crazy. What else can you say? Uh, eight men of, the, of their capabilities, of their size, of their power, all uh, butting heads in a ring at one time, and. Uh, who knows where it's going to end? I mean, I'm uh, seriously, I feel that someone is going to be uh, seriously injured before this whole thing is through. Uh, indeed, uh, we saw some uh, excellent action earlier in the program as far as tag action was concerned. Uh, well, that particular match, the Armstrongs against Bass and Shakina was a super match. It was a barn burner. It certainly was. Of course, we saw the former champions, Rosen County, come up with a win over Mike Jackson and uh, Norvell Austin, which was also a good tag match uh, on the program today, Charlie. Jimmy Golden, uh, of course, in action again on Southeastern Wrestling today. Uh, he uh, had a great win, the opening match on today's program. He's cast the gauntlet uh, in the direction of uh, Jerry Stubbs. He's looking for that U.S. Junior win. Of course, we want to talk about 